to experience wildlife, scenery, people of Africa, come with us on a 2,000 mile trek through Kenya, visiting forests, mountains, deserts, lakes. Most trips to Kenya begin in Nairobi, an international city, sometimes called City of Flowers, where November is springtime and jacaranda are bursting with bloom. Nairobi's population is 800,000. British influence is still common. The National Museum in Kenya with its variety of exhibits is also a place of learning for school children. The earliest ancestors of us all may have originated in Kenya as discovered by Lewis and Mary Leakey. Here man evolved erect and skilled in the use of tools. Live reptiles are exhibited across the street from the museum. Radiating from Nairobi, we will visit national parks Savo, Amboseli, Nakuru, Mount Kenya, national game reserves Masai Mara, Samburu, and lakes of the Great Rift Valley. Beginning in Savo West, we feel the excitement of seeing our first animal in the wild, zebras that have rolled in red soil. Outstanding in Savo National Park is its large elephant population. <laughs> Birds, too. Yellow-necked spurfowl. Helmeted guinea fowl. And secretary birds stalking small reptiles. The ostrich, largest of birds, cannot fly but is swift on foot. The water buck lives near water courses of the grasslands and savanna, while the clipspringer inhabits rocky outcrops. Perched on a hill in Savo National Park is Nagulia Safari Lodge. Near the entrance, a sign in three languages warns guests. Each room has a balcony overlooking the lighted water hole, and there is a deck where guests gather to watch wildlife, such as ground hornbills and marabou stork. On our way to Mazima Springs, we see colorful birds. A stream red with silt from recent rains is home for hippos grazing nearby. Hippos also populate Mazima Springs, where crystal clear water gushes from a lava flow. Much of Kenya is volcanic in origin. Boulders strew the landscape. Cinder cones are symmetrical peaks. Mountains have eroded into green valleys and extensive plains. Our home on the Amboseli Plain is Kilimanjaro Buffalo Lodge, where each couple has its own manata. We walk the lovely grounds, past Hemingway's Bar, until sunset on our way to dinner, where we are greeted by the host and hostess and return to our manata by moonlight. Rising in the tropical dawn, we climb a hill to look out over the water hole and across a sea of treetops. 
dissolving into morning mist. Turning, we see the twin peaks of Kilimanjaro in the pink light of dawn. As we begin our morning game drive in Amboseli National Park, a giraffe browses in front of Kilimanjaro. This is the Maasai giraffe, identified by his blotchy pattern. On the right, a four-day-old baby near mother's rear finds its milk between her front legs. Our guide is excited when he sights a cheetah. Long legs and streamlined body enable him to attain great speed. Out in the bush, drivers sometimes leave the rough tracks for a special sighting and take off across bumpy terrain. After a rain, tracks become mud, sometimes a veritable stream. In other places, sandy soil dries out quickly, creating dust. On game drives, passengers must stay inside the combi. Lions rest during the day and hunt towards evening or dawn. We disturb his nap. Likewise, the female sleeping nearby. Where there are predators, there are vultures to devour the remains. The white-headed vulture is one of the six East African kinds. Cape buffalo here resting, when threatened, are dangerous. Old termite hills are often used by small animals for their burrow. A family of black rhinos, bull, female, baby. When the bull begins to charge, we take off. In contrast to huge, lumbering rhinos, gazelles are small and graceful. Thompson's gazelles are affectionately called Tommies. Impala are extremely swift with an incredible bound. The males have lyre-shaped horns. Wildebeest travel in herds. When startled, he takes off with his characteristic, peculiar gait. During the rainy season, clouds may gather in late afternoon. During our stay in Kenya, rains were generally at night while we slept. Rains rejuvenate the marsh, the place to see yellow-billed stork, white-faced tree duck, water dickoff, and small ducks in front of black-winged stilts. White pelicans have a curious fishing habit all ducking down in unison and raising their heads simultaneously. The Goliath heron poises for takeoff. The African crown crane is named for its yellow crest. A king cobra eludes a marsh mongoose. Animals also frequent the marsh. Tracks of large animals crisscross the area. Hippo tracks leading into the water. Before leaving 
Kilimanjaro Lodge, we visit the gift shop. The green beads are malachite from the mountain. The brown are tiger eye. Also displayed are Maasai spears and their shields. Leaving Amasala National Park, we come to the main road. The Village Country Club is open day and night. People of the Kikuya tribe are farmers, tending fields by hand with crude tools. The Maasai tribes are herdsmen. Their wealth is reckoned by the size of their herds. Peddlers offer their wares when we stop to view the Great Rift Valley. 20 million years ago, the Arabian Peninsula began separating from the African continent, causing a gigantic crack or fault. The Great Rift Valley, one of the seven wonders of the natural world. The valley floor is dry and desert-like, but it is farmed. At higher elevation, the opposite side is green. A low euphorbia tree dramatizes the landscape as we enter Masai Mara Game Reserve and arrive at Mara River Camp. Our tents are along the Mara River with its many hippos. At night, they wander among the tents. In the wee hours, we watch and hear them munching grass just outside our beds. In the morning, this track is right beside the canvas of our tent. Our tent is protected by a thatched roof and has an enclosed bathroom at the rear with plumbing on the outside. In a tent, there is no desk for writing the daily experiences. We eat outside, listening to morning bird calls. On our game drive, the first sighting is baboons. Termite mounds are scattered throughout Kenya. We find a pride of lions. Where one has been eating a fresh kill of buffalo. Remains left about don't last long because they are eaten by various scavengers, <laughs> including the hyena. Even bone fragments are cleaned up by ants. Roan antelope grazing in Masamara include the topi. Zebras are gregarious. Warthogs take off, tails in the air, at the slightest sound. Baby following mother. They characteristically kneel while eating. Our driver guide takes us to see a crocodile and hippos completely relaxed, as are some buffalo. 
others grazing on the grasslands of the Masamara Plain. We ask our guide to show us a campground. Though camping is primitive, a permit is required. This morning, as we leave Masai Mara, we have a rare privilege. Special arrangements have been made for us to visit and photograph an actual Maasai village. Normally, photographing the Maasai or their herds anywhere is forbidden. The circular village is surrounded by thornbush, protection against lions. The homes, about 18 feet in diameter, are scattered around the perimeter of the enclosure. Several families live in each of the few dwellings, men having more than one wife each. This is an actual Maasai village whose natives find us as different as we find them. Most heads are shaved for cleanliness and for convenience. Maasai adorn themselves with colorful jewelry from head to foot. Without communication, we are regarded with quizzical expressions. While women and children do the village work, men are away hunting and visiting. These people strive to retain their ancient tribal customs and their primitive lifestyle. Though naturally tall, they live in low houses made of sticks, dung, and mud. We are invited to enter. Even short people must stoop to enter this house. With no windows, it is dark and smoky inside. Our guide interprets, as this woman explains, women and children sleep on the right, men on the left. The smoke comes from the open fire in the kitchen. Baby goats and chickens are kept inside beyond the storage area. While we have been in the house, outside the Maasai have been thrusting branches into the ground to display their handwork they make for trading, singing as they do so. I bargain for a necklace. One entrepreneur follows me with his necklace as we leave this unique African experience. We are bound for lakes of the Rift Valley. Stopping for lunch at a native church, we give our extra food to nearby Maasai herdsmen then back into the Great Rift Valley. Yellow fever trees announce our arrival at Safari Land Lodge on Lake Naivasha, where home is an attractive cottage, a striking contrast to our tent on the muddy river bank. Here we are just south of the equator at a comfortable altitude. Workmen using primitive tools tend a wonderland of blooming plants from all over the world, accompanied by unusual bird song. Overlooking this natural sculpture is the dining room where we are elegantly served gourmet cuisine. Afterwards, we hire a boat to go out on Lake Naivasha, past papyrus-lined banks. We have more lakes to explore. 
After stopping at a sidewalk display in town, we arrive at Lake Nakuru National Park. Black-faced monkeys with whitish cheek tufts are vervets. The euphorbia forests are spectacular in the sunlight. We check in at Lion Hill Tented Camp before going to see the flamingos on Lake Nakuru, where there can be two to three million at a time, making an incredible sound of wing beating, chirping, feeding. There are two kinds, the greater flamingos, almost six feet tall, and the lesser flamingos, half that height. Late afternoon light lengthens our shadows on the feather-strewn soda flats of the shore. Back at camp, as I write the diary, a drumbeat summons us to dinner. Next morning, I emerge from our tent to see sunrise turn the far shore to pink. Soon we are again at the lake. In flight, the flamingo seems mostly neck and legs. On a high point overlooking Lake Nakuru, Hyrax inhabit the rocky cliff. Incredibly, his closest relative is the elephant. White-headed cormorants have their rookery. And there are fish eagles. Animals as well as birds like the shore, such as the baby reed buck. Yellow fever trees are so named because they grow in low places where mosquitoes breed. The male water buck has heavily ringed horns. A leopard is almost concealed in the crotch of a tree. Disturbed, he starts down the fallen limb. Warthogs emerge from their den. In late afternoon, we find the Rothschild giraffe. More massive than the other two kinds, he can have from three to five horns. Christians are on their way to Sunday morning worship. Devout Muslims pray five times daily facing Mecca. We pass fields of corn and wheat. Another farm product is sisal processed nearby into fibers. One of its uses is twine, which can tie up bundles. Sisal grows in the lower, hotter area near the equator. Huts of the Tugan tribe dot the hot desert floor. A son of the Tugan tribe is the president of Kenya. Termite hills can be unusual in form. Lovely Lake Beringo, where we stop for a break, is a resort area. There is no resort at 400 foot deep Lake Bogoria, a national reserve, location of geysers and boiling springs. We eat box lunches under a tree, observing the geysers. Driving to Mount Kenya, we pass a low blooming beside the road. Today, lunch stop is at Thompson Falls, which drops 237 feet, where people stop to enjoy natural wonders there are gift shops. 
These are some of the best we've seen. This gal in traditional manner carries our previous purchases while we shop at her place before we continue on toward Mount Kenya. In Kikuyu mythology, dwelling place of the gods, we are lulled to sleep beside a rushing river. Next morning, a four-wheel drive Land Rover takes us to Mount Kenya National Park. As we ascend a rough road, high altitude forest changes from pine to moss draped trees to high altitude bamboo forest. Only one young couple and the two of us choose to take the strenuous hike from here. Visitors are advised against doing so unless physically fit. As we begin, mossy trees are covered with rainforest growth. A white chest identifies the Sykes monkey. Since climbing this vertical bog up slippery wet terrain in thin air is tiring, we are glad our guide stops us to eat lunch and to enjoy the view of the fog-shrouded valley below. True alpine plants of Mount Kenya include broad-leaved lobelia, which catch and hold moisture in their centers. Ostrich plume lobelia, which appear luminescent in momentary sunlight. Avoiding pools of water, we hop from rock to rock and from hummock to hummock. The challenge of climbing on Mount Kenya above timberline is a satisfying and exhilarating experience. Tiny alpine flowers appear some exactly like little butterflies. We reach our goal, a cave at the 12,000 foot level, where the four of us jubilantly exclaim, we made it. On our way down, we are greeted by another guide. Although its peaks are covered with snow, Mount Kenya straddles the equator. As we leave the National Park for a time, we are driving at an elevation of 9,000 feet. Our gradual descent takes us through small towns. Driving on the left side of the road in British style, we are en route to Samburu National Game Reserve, just north of the equator. Again, we have a roomy cottage all to ourselves. Hanging from the rafters above each bed are knotted white affairs, which Carl thinks are unusual lamps, but which I figure must be mosquito netting bound up during the day. Returning from dinner, we find them released and neatly encasing the beds. With careful maneuvering, Carl crawls inside with this overhead view. Samburu Lodge is on the Uaso Miro River, Maasai for river of brown water. Tropical birds frequent the grounds. Exotic to us, we'll introduce a few. The golden weaver white-browed sparrow weaver, red-headed weaver. Thirty kinds of weavers are listed in the birds of East Africa. Weavers build closed nests which hang gracefully. White-bellied go-away bird. 
superb starling. We imported the wrong one. Black-headed Oriole. Lodge guests gather for the Samburu dances. Since his beginning, man has expressed himself through the rhythm and movement of dance. If man began in Africa, so did the dance. Tribal dances tell stories, celebrate events, express emotions, invoke worship. The tall Samburu are graceful dancers. This dance involves head swinging, accented by long trailing headgear. The language of body adornment is almost as old as man himself. Nowhere more varied and expressive than in Africa. Afterwards, dancers hear themselves on Carl's tape recorder. In the heavy dew of early morning, the dick dick are grazing. Tiny antelope, only 12 pounds and 15 inches high, endearing with soulful eyes. In the center behind the fallen branch, a newly born impala is mothered by all the females. Each fondles the baby. When it strays, it is nudged to safety by a male on the left and a female on the right. Mother elephants, too, are exceedingly protective of their young and continue to be so beyond the first year. Watching such tenderness has been a part of our African experience. Also, seeing animals in their natural setting, free, alive, magnificent. So many kinds, each different from the other and with distinct personalities. A favorite is the giraffe, awkward yet graceful. Their coats glossy, colorful, patterned, their forms so elongated, legs, bodies, necks, topped by a curiously small head with bump-like horns and long eyelashes. Their movement so elegantly fluid, whether moving slowly or running at a gallop. Elephants are impressive. Coarse, wrinkled skin, great bodies, small tails twitching. The massive head tapering into the facile trunk white curving tusks that gleam in the sun, small eyes, great ears continually fanning, a strangely graceful movement for so ponderous a body. Zebra, black and white stripes vivid against green and brown. So many kinds of antelope. Handsome water buck. Tommies, bodies flashing in the sunlight. Awkward shaggy wildebeest. Impala, 
graceful curving horns matching the grace of their bodies and their movement. These beautiful animals move against dramatic backgrounds. Back at the lodge, lunch is an array of gourmet delicacies. After the usual afternoon rest, we board our vehicles again to see some different wildlife. A monitor lizard, oryx with horns almost a meter long. With mule-like ears, the grevy zebra is pinstriped with a white belly. Eland, a large, heavy-set antelope. Garanuck, called a giraffe gazelle because of his elongated neck. Browse high in the trees. Tawny eagle. Paintings of Egyptian geese have been found in ancient tombs. It is unusual to see an ostrich courtship dance. With white under feathers fluffed and raised, the male is pursuing two females. As he runs, he lowers and raises his great wings, kneels on the ground in a fan-like display, then runs again, flaring his wings the female still eluding him. Giraffes feed on thorny acacias. The reticulated giraffe is the most handsome of the three kinds we have seen. Brighter in color with a network of white lines. Exuberant impala make strange grunting sounds as they dash hither and yon in the late afternoon. Still later, oryx parade under the arch of a rainbow. Earlier, our guide had helped free another combi that was stuck. Now he checks out the crossing we must use to return to the lodge. When we find we are stuck, we get out to lighten the load. Hopelessly, the rear wheel is in up to the hubcap. At sunset, the top must go down and we inside for safety. Since it happens to be Thanksgiving Day, we Americans talk with our African guide exchanging customs during the four hours till we are missed and rescued. Back at the lodge, Janet's long-bodied animals watch us eat our hastily prepared omelet, a never-to-be-forgotten Thanksgiving dinner. Afterwards, we unwind by watching crocodiles from the deck. Leaving Samburu Game Reserve past the caretaker's home, we bid goodbye to his children. Lunch is freshly caught trout, after which we walk the grounds before heading for Nairobi. En route, we stop at a market, second largest in Africa, the first being in Nigeria. Coffee beans are dried in the sun as we near Nairobi. Next morning, we look over the university. Later, while others shop, we take a final game drive in Nairobi National Park, four miles from the city. Nowhere else in the world is there a wildlife reserve with such a variety of animals and birds so close to a major city. Cheetah with young. 
silverback jackals lurk near a mother ostrich guarding four babies. Later, as Carl rests, I record the ending of our African experience. We return from three weeks in Africa with vivid impressions. Vast plains ringed with blue mountains. Yellow fever trees glowing in sunlight. Umbrella acacias symmetrically beautiful. Baobab trees strangely misshapen. Colorful birds with rare plumage. Splendid animals in harmony with nature. Natives with friendly smiles and Swahili speech. The total, in essence, a spiritual experience. 